With just how many blocks there are in Minecraft, you gotta admit, there are some that you might not fully understand, whether it be beacons, enchantment tables, mushroom blocks, or whatever chorus fruit is, occasionally you may get tripped up seeing a block for the very first time, or even the 50th time. Minecraft has a lot of blocks, and undoubtedly there's no way that you could name all of them off the top of your head, provided that you don't have pictures in front of you or something. In this video, we're going to be talking about blocks that, even if you had a picture of them in front of you, you might not even be able to know what they are. Some of these blocks served almost zero function, and some we would love to see back in the game. Either way, let's see if you know these blocks. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. In the early days of Minecraft, Notch, the creator of the game, had expressed an interest in half-sized blocks in Minecraft. For us, these blocks are more commonly known as slabs. Obviously, his interest was to make the game more diverse than just a simple full block design. One of his earliest tests with slabs was released on October 22nd, 2009. In survival test 0.26 underscore 04, Notch released Dirt Slabs. Dirt Slabs were never fully added to the game, but they toyed around with them. In an image Notch released for his personal blog on Tumblr, you can definitely see why. To put it simply, they didn't look great. Failing to make the terrain look natural, they were pretty quickly scrapped. The day after dirt slabs were introduced into the game, however, Notch released a video onto his personal YouTube channel of him building with stone slabs in a video called Minecraft Half Size Tile Test. He was excited with his work, stating, I finally got stair physics to work well and solidly. If the physics ever hit a wall, it tries to move up half a tile and sees if it can get further by doing that. If it does, it starts a small animation and won't take another step like that until the animation finishes. There are a few bugs and issues still, as can be seen in the video, but it's looking good. While we don't have dirt slabs anymore within the game, I don't think anybody would inherently be opposed to them being added. I don't think that I'd want them to spawn naturally, as it would just ruin the aesthetic of Minecraft almost entirely if they were littered around the world, but I would love for us to be able to make them and then grass either grow on top of them or with silk touch grass. Either way, there's endless potential here. Did you know that something in Minecraft actually came before Redstone? And no, it wasn't Bluestone. On January 25th, 2010, the code for gears were added into Minecraft. Being added to Minecraft, they hardly worked at all. While there was no way to obtain them other than through the use of inventory editing the game, they were kind of weird. Gears could only be placed on the side of blocks, making them very similar to paintings in placement functionality. When you would try to destroy destroy the item by mining it, it would actually mine directly through, ignoring the gears and going for the block behind it. When the block behind was broken, the gear would still be there, but instead it would be invisible, much like barrier blocks of today. To get rid of gears, players needed to pour water onto them. To put it simply, gears had zero functionality at this point in the game. On February 27th, 2010, the gear was renamed to being the COG, making players speculate on its future uses, wondering if it would become more prominent in gameplay. Many months later, on June 27th, 2010, the block was removed from the game. Sitting completely useless in the game for quite some time, the gear's data value value 55 was replaced by redstone in the java edition alpha version 1.0.1 on july 3rd 2010 honestly we wouldn't have it any other way although it would kind of be neat to see this block's return for some kind of vertical redstone element don't cry wipe your eyes because we're only a few blocks through this list Wait, that's not you crying? Well, then it must have been the Crying Obsidian. Now, this one being on the list is kind of cheating. Not because the block was in a weird version, or because it never made it out of testing or whatever, but simply because it never fully existed in Minecraft. Crying Obsidian simply was just a texture. It was never really used. From what we know about the block, it was going to be used to implement a spawn point changing obelisk, as quoted by Jeb, with the texture being added in Beta 1. 
1.3, it was obviously abandoned after beds were added into the game. In a tweet, Jeb stated that it would have been crafted using lapis and obsidian. In beta 1.5, the texture was replaced for crying obsidian with a replacement for grass. In February 2012, when Jeb was asked if they would ever bring back crying obsidian or add some new color or texture blocks, Jeb responded as saying, as soon as I've made preparations for more texture space. While there's obviously no need to cry over missing textures, we'd still be interested in seeing this block implemented in some form. Another block that was only in texture form was what many interpreted as a chair as shown by the quote unquote side and front view. Although many viewed the second texture as a table. Long story short, I think many of us would appreciate that over using minecarts, boats, or even worse, stairs with signs to make furniture. Although some people do get pretty creative. When Minecraft 1.14 rolled around, some people freaked out about the various blocks being added into the game. And don't worry, we're not talking about the smithing and fletching table in this video. Alongside those and a plethora of other blocks, the stone cutter was added into Minecraft. For many, this was the first time that they had ever seen anything like it. For a bunch of other people, it was the return of an old favorite. In the old Pocket Edition Alpha version of Minecraft, the stone cutter was released, being used to craft every stone type block in the game. The only blocks it couldn't create were itself, mineral blocks, and furnaces. Using the Mattis crafting system, otherwise known as the same as the crafting table in Pocket Edition, the block was extremely useful. The stonecutter's recipe in that version of the game was four cobblestone and a two by two square. Nearly three years after the stonecutter's introduction in Pocket Edition, the block was made to be unobtainable in survival mode, and all items were now crafted with the standard crafting table instead. This change sparked loads of controversy within the Pocket Edition community, from those who thought the change just didn't cut it, and those who thought that it shouldn't be brought back. Obviously, this was for parody's sake, as the games needed to be similar to the Java Edition and console editions as well. Obviously, stone cutters were an extremely useful tool, coming back many years later, Mojang clearly knew what they were doing the first time around. Sometimes, you just gotta go with your gut. And now, probably the most famous of all of the blocks in this list, the Nether Reactor Core. If you've never touched the original Pocket Edition of the game, you might be scratching your head at this one. If you played that version of the game a lot, back from 2012 to 2015, you may be filled with some nostalgia. This core, currently, is unobtainable in Minecraft without the use of inventory editing. Being exclusive to Bedrock Edition, New Nintendo 3DS Edition, Pi Edition and Education Edition, it's been paraded around a lot, but hardly ever used. To use the structure, you used to have to create the Nether Reactor. This reactor, defined by the words of Duncan Green, is an arcane device that would create a tear in the world. With four blocks of gold, some cobblestone, and a reactor core made of iron and diamonds, the player could access all of the resources from the Nether, but with the risk of invasion from beings that live there. And honestly, he summed it up perfectly. Creating and activating the structure would resurrect a monumental 35 by 17 by 17 nether spire. Items would spawn around the reactor like glowstone dust, nether quartz, cacti, sugarcane, both mushrooms, bows, bowls, pumpkin seeds, and melon seeds. During the effect, the structure would turn into glowing obsidian, and after 45 seconds, the reactor's effects would end, replacing the reactor with regular obsidian. While it's not in the game now, and this was primarily because of the lack of the nether in pocket edition at the time, its inclusion was certainly pretty neat. It's history. I would love to see this one brought back to creative modes just for the sake of having its functionality, but probably not to survival. All in all, it was an extremely cool feature. But what do you think? Did you know about any of these blocks? Some or even all of them? Would you like to have any of them back? Because you shouldn't block that idea out. Jokes aside though, how do you feel about these? And do you have any stories with them? Let me know in the comments section down below. But other than that, that just about does it for me for now. If you guys enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like on it. Because it would really help out myself and Michael McChill, who co-wrote and edited this video. The channel 
channel and the video quite a lot. But anyways guys, I hope you all enjoyed. My name is Ant Venom, and I bid you all farewell. Thanks so much for watching.